Hey guys, it's Russell back and welcome to another episode of Bring That Mercedes Back From The Dead. This is the episode I think most people have been waiting on. Um, I apologize for not having made uh, a video, gosh it seems like almost a week. I've been spending all my time trying to get the Jetta going with the new injection pump have not been successful yet. I'm not going to give up, but I needed to shift gears, and this is what we're doing. So, um, I'm going to wash the hood. That's what we're going to be working on today. I'm going to wash the hood. I'm going to re-clay bar the hood. I want everybody to see how dull and oxidized this paint is. This paint is 10 years old, and it's a single-stage enamel. And it's pretty, it's pretty bad. It's pretty oxidized. So, if you guys remember, I had done the top and the trunk with um, just the uh, the rotary buffer and doing some, you know, just buffing on it. And it's just not working. It's not. I'm going to have to pull out the professional stuff. And what I'm going to show you guys, you can do. But I have to caution you that this is not something that's for the beginner. Uh, you can go use it. You can learn on it. I would recommend if you're going to try to do stuff like this that you go to the junkyard and get you a fender or a hood or some piece of sheet metal and practice on that. Uh, at this point, well, you know what? I've talked enough. I'm just going to show you and we're going to talk as I go. So. I'm going to do a quick speed up, washing this, clay barring it, drying it, and then we'll get it back in the garage. All right, so this is, uh, as I said before, wow, the light's not cooperating. 2000 grit wet dry sandpaper. This is a 3M number 20 wet dry sponge pad. This is what we're going to be using as our sanding block. So I'm just going to fold. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and I'm going to fold it in half and fold it in half again, and then I'm going to rip it. And this will be one one piece will be more than plenty. Uh, Now, if you have a clear coat car, you are going to have some white residue come off. That is the clear coat. This is not clear coat, so it's going to probably turn a little bit of color. And I'm going to take the uh, this and just saturate this.
you want to really use a, a sanding block and not a not your hand because your fingers are going to have different pressure points and the block is going to be consistent now it's glass smooth which is what we want Also be very careful on the areas that aren't flat. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's it's pulling off quite a bit of oxidation. Of course, when I'm trying to do a video, it rains. All right, no, the paint's not ruined. You can definitely see why I sanded. Um, if you could feel this, it feels like uh, it feels like glass. It's so smooth. But um, there's a lot of orange peel. Well, not a lot, but there's there is orange peel in here, and my goal is not to remove the orange peel but just to remove some of the oxidation. This is the 3M Perfected system. Uh, really, it doesn't get any better than this. This system, I think, has been out about 20 years. It's designed to use the, uh, there's three uh, liquids, if you will. This one is the rubbing compound. Number two is the machine polish. And number three is the ultra-fine machine polish. Now, there's a lot of systems out there that Adams and some other that use color-coded. That's nothing new. Uh, this has been out for 20, like I said, about 20 years. We're going to be using the rotary buffer. This is a DeWalt. Um, it has the 3M Quick Connect. The pads are Quick Connect, which I'll show you. Now, there's two things that I can do on the first compound which we'll be using, I'll remove these, um, you can either use the foam or the wool. Um, and I am going to try the wool first. The wool is going to be a little bit more aggressive than the foam. This is a six inch pad. These are, I believe, eight inch pad. Uh, they're double sided. These pads aren't cheap. They're about $30, but they're phenomenal. You use this system, with these pads and don't try to skimp out just you know if you're gonna if you're gonna take this to the extreme just use the really use the good stuff so this has a hole in the middle and it uses the quick connect it just snaps in so I'm gonna try the wool pad first and we're gonna be going probably about 1200 RPMs. If it looks like this is gonna to be too aggressive, then I'll switch to the foam pad, which is a little bit less aggressive. So, let's get to it. All right, so I wanna show you guys real quick how this quick connect works. It's in the uh, locked position. You just line up the hex, push it, and it's on just like that. And then to change the pad or flip it over, like that all right so what we're going to do is we are going to start at we're going to do a small section let me lift this hood up just a little bit now this is completely different than using a da um, i actually prefer using a rotary because of the faster arm speed um, but anyway, so we're going to put a little bit of compound right here. I can get the bottle open. Just a little bit, like that. And this buffer rotates. You can see it rotates clockwise. Alright, so I have to be very careful that this edge right here, that's why I tape this, if this hood were flat, could cut into it. Um, so basically, I'm just going to take this, just get a little bit, and just going to keep it keep it flat. And just move just like this.
Okay, I'll pull a bit more. You don't want this to dry out. And see, see the junk that's gotten on the pad already? And to pick this up, we're just going to do this like this. And you see there's no sling whatsoever. Keep the pad flat as you can. Again, put a little bit more there. And I'm just going to pick it up just like that. Keeping the pad flat, not putting a lot of pressure on there at all. Being very mindful of the, uh, the body line right there. I can tilt it up a little bit. All right, so what I want to do is I'm just kind of experimenting with the speed. That was only like 600. So I'm going to get a microfiber cloth. We'll wipe this off and see what we've got. All right, so you see the amount of junk that's coming off there. And you can already see it's starting to bring the bring the shine out so I'm gonna ramp the speed up just a little bit and we'll start again Right now I'm at about about 1400. Sorry about that. My mic battery died. So there was some staining from who knows what that was here that it was still there when uh, after I wet sanded it and that's gone. So um, when your pad's still good right now, but um, we're just going to keep on going here, do this next section. Okay, again, we'll just, we'll just spray it up, pick it up like this. And I'm about 1400 RPM, keeping the pad as flat as possible, keeping it moving. careful you can get the body line okay and once it starts to dry up like that then and as you see it's just getting worse I'm gonna have to clean this in just one more section What a difference. Now it's still going to be dull until we use the other two compounds, the other pads, but uh, hopefully the camera is picking up the difference. All right, so I finished the hood with the stage one, and the, re the result is absolutely. Phenomenal. Now this doesn't look good yet, 
Um, it's really not clear. There's a lot of haze in it, but um, you know, it's just the compounding. Now compare it to this. That's, it was not wet sanded, but that's how dull it was. And then compare it to the, to the top. It's just no comparison. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to step number two. All right. Step number two is the black pad. And of course we're going to use the machine perfected machine polish. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did. This is an eight inch pad. So I'll be able to work maybe a hair a bit faster, but we're going to do the same thing. The shinier this gets, the more imperfections I see in the actual paint job itself. That's okay. All right, so our final polishing step, we're gonna be using the blue pad. We'll be using the, this is called the ultra fine machine polish, of course, blue to blue. And we're gonna do the exact same thing we did. We'll do the same thing, gonna use the same speed. Alright, so I pulled the car outside, washed the hood, got all the compounding and sling off. And now I was trying to debate what to put on here, and I'm using the Jess Car Power Lock sealant. You know, normally Adams is my favorite, but I think. I like this better. All right, guys, here is the final result. Um, huge transformation from what it was, for sure. There would be no way you could see the reflection of the house in the hood. I think um, I may try to use 1500 grit sandpaper on the next panel, just to cut a hair bit more. But I'm very, very pleased with the way it came out. Um, probably start doing this side. This is the side that sees the sun and you can see how oxidized it is. As opposed to this side, which is really the northern side, um, doesn't get as much, or really doesn't get any sun. So but yeah, I think uh, probably do the, the fender and the door next. But yes, very, very pleased with the results and I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are enjoying seeing this Mercedes come back to life. At last count, there's probably, I don't know, maybe 50 videos that I can think off the top of my head that we've got to do on this, on this unit. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. I want to get this thing, um, get it back into its former glory. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for your subscribership. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. Hit that bell icon next to the subscription button, and you'll be notified as soon as I upload new content. And I will see you guys on the next video.